helps or hurts. Alright, here we go. So, pretty much everywhere. shouldn't be actually hitting that kind of uh, pace early on. Um, later sessions, you know, you'll probably get the traction to move on. Uh, put the brake here, move the belly in, we're good. Uh, remember, nice, slow pants, and that's where you can get maximum traction available on the tires. That was one lap around the Reno Friendly Racetrack. This is Robert, and today I'm going to talk to you about my first PDX event. Not 100% sure on where to start. I learned quite a bit, and I'm sure I'm probably forgetting some things. But there's a lot I learned, and information I'd like to spread, so I'm going to just jump right into it. When I first got on the track, I was really nervous and excited. This was the first time I was on a real racetrack, my first track day ever, and I was getting instructor time, so I knew at the end of the day I was going to be a little faster and a little stronger than when I was going in. Thanks to my instructor, I now know how to look at corners better. Solo events were always teaching me to look for the apex, as if that was the only way around a corner. But in many corners, that doesn't always work out to be the fastest. And if there are other cars on track, you may have to take a different apex just to maintain position or even pass. So bringing up passing, I was on the track with several other cars, but because we were all retarded noobs, we were designated specific passing points on the track and forbidden to pass anywhere else. I understood this, but after five or so laps, <laughs> I kind of wanted just to race, but couldn't. Probably for the best, I'm still an amateur, but I still have the competitive desire. Which brings me to my second revelation of the day, but the first I'm going to discuss. In solo events, I'm slow as hell. I can beat some of the newer people, sometimes even people with more experience, but because I'm still learning, and my car not being the fastest, I'm usually average across the board on comparisons. On the track though, I rocked. I was properly quick. I was passed only one time, and that was when I got stuck behind a guy who wasn't following the rules. We are supposed to signal to people behind us who are driving faster than us, allowing them to come through. We are not allowed to pass without that signal from the driver in the front. Basically this guy wouldn't signal. And then a guy behind me thought, screw it, and just passed us both. I later caught up to him and basically just tailed him for a bit. He maintained good speed and I was learning about something else by following him. That something else was not to follow other cars. This may or may not seem obvious depending on your perspective, but it is important to go at every straight and corner at your own speed and the speed your car can maintain. 
Some cars were faster in the straights than I, so at first, to compensate, I would try and speed up, brake later, and accelerate sooner. Big mistake. Luckily I learned this lesson without crashing or even spinning, but trying to follow someone I would often brake sooner than I should and end up missing my proper apex and braking point. The result was a slower time. In addition, there were cars like Audis and Corvettes I would try and keep up with, and they brake later due to their grip and power. As a result, there were moments where I went past my braking point and had to correct in mid-turn. This of course put me off my line. Some of these corners, if I were going any faster, I probably would have spun. It is important to negotiate your passing points with your car's limits in mind, not just thinking, oh, they are slower, so I will take them on the outside here and then get them on the inside there. No, going outside on the first corner may put you in a bad position and wrong RPM range or even just bad part of the track. It's important to really know this and understand this so you know exactly where to go and how to get there. Which brings me to the next point. The racetrack was bumpy, really bumpy. In solos, you have a nice flat area, except those damn gaps in the pavement. Even asphalt, no real chance to get big speed, no real chance of a hazard forming. On the track, every lap had a chance of changing a bit, depending on the line you took, depending on the car ahead of you, depending on the speed differences between sections of different laps. You had the chance of hitting potholes, cracks, dirt, or just being hit by a huge gust of wind. At 75 miles per hour, a huge gust of wind could make or break your apex, and it's important to be responsive to this. There were many times I saw dirt up ahead and I had to slow down a touch sooner, or go around and change my entry angle. Now if you asked me that at the time, I wouldn't have really known I was doing it, but going back and looking through the footage, you can see places where I notably slowed down and tried to avoid some random dirt spills from other drivers. It is something I'll have to keep working on to get more experience with. But this kind of thing can only be practiced at the limit, so more track time is vital for this kind of lesson. The way PDX is scheduled, we show up in the morning, have a bit of a class meeting, and let the time trials and club racers go first. They compete for whatever prize or something at the end of the year. Then the noobs have a chance to jump into a car with some of the more experienced instructors to get a feel for the track at a fast speed, which I think is just cruel. And then those noobs take over driving their own cars with instructors teaching them the rights and wrongs. We then break for a class discussion and repeat the pattern for four sessions altogether. For this event, a huge dust storm took over and I only really got two sessions, which kind of sucked, but it happens. During these discussions, we talk about areas we could improve. However, most of the areas discussed I had no issues with. Or rather, I understood properly but needed to execute it properly. One of the areas I understood well, but executed poorly, was the smoothness of my braking and acceleration. Basically, I stopped on the brakes like an idiot, and then barreled the car into an unstable cornering motion. A good way to tell that you are doing this, even if nobody says so, is when your company is holding on to the old shit bar, bracing themselves with their legs, and throw one hand onto the dashboard as though they didn't like the taste of plastic. This brought up the necessity to learn left foot braking and foot rolls as I'm dubbing it. This technique I'm sure you have at least heard about and is something I've been meaning to learn, but it is a bit difficult to practice this on the streets. However, for the time being, I focus on braking points and entry speeds, how to judge corners and where to be at different parts of the track. I'll have to practice this next time or maybe even during solos. Okay, so let's go back to my first revelation I had from being on the track. I'd say by lap two or three, I noticed something odd. On the long straight and part of the back portion of the track, I was doing something against what I usually do, even going up mountainsides. I was subconsciously avoiding going faster. Admittedly, I realized the reason. I was scared. I was on a new road I'd never been on before. I was reaching cornering speeds and limits I've never been at before. I was practicing things I've never thought of, or could even practice in solos or on the street. So yeah, for a brief moment, I had no balls. But by lap three, I realized this. I realized the fear I was feeling and how it was affecting my time. I didn't want to break my car, I didn't want to hurt my instructor in an accident. If I got into an accident I couldn't walk away from, what would happen to my kids and how would I be able to get to work, even if I survived? There were a lot of questions and fears in my head, fears I've never had before. So I accepted it. It was my choice to be there, my actions that put me there. And no matter what happened to me, life goes on, with or without me, so I accepted it. I pushed it. As a result, I started getting much faster, and really started getting into it. Even the instructor made a comment about how fast I took the track, especially being the first time. So I imagine every racer comes across this and has to choose. But it wasn't until I was taking corners at 50 to 106 miles an hour in a stock vehicle and no safety equipment other than a helmet did I really understand what it meant to make this choice. 
So that's it. There is a lot more to cover, like late apexes, when to take them, analyzing each corner for your entry and exit points. But this is some advanced stuff I'm not overly proficient at yet. All I would be doing is repeating what I have heard rather than actually telling you about what I learned. So until I understand this concept fully, I don't feel comfortable on explaining it, especially if I'm explaining it wrong. I will try and analyze my footage and hopefully bring you something before the next solo and PDX event. There is one more file that was unfortunately corrupted but showed me driving into a huge dust storm at about 105 miles an hour like a badass. It scared the shit out of me, but it was just awesome doing that. I'll try and get that fixed and show you on another post. So for the time being, enjoy the videos and I will keep posting.
make sure we hit all of our apexes and then we're going at like 80%. Yeah, in front of this is going at 50%. <laughs> That's good, that'll get your brake pads are all cleaned up and the temperature. Okay, so when we're coming off that corner, you said don't worry about that corner. So do you want to take this one wide and then kind of go like that? Yeah, so, so what will happen is you just sort of, when you come off that thing, um, what we're going to end up doing is just sort of drifting up to the left. But then the track bends back to your left. Right. So you're going to end up to the right and that's why. It makes a lot more sense when you like look at the map, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was a blast, man. That was a good session. Picked up the track pretty quick. So now, so what's the schedule? Do uh, do you go back out? Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm running in club trials. And